Here in the flat, seemingly endless landscape of the Texas Panhandle, on a largely unremarkable stretch of highway, is one of Texas's most recognizable art installations. Envisioned in the early 70s, the concept of Cadillac Ranch was simple if unusual. Take 10 old Cadillacs, ranging from 1949 to 1963, and bury them in a straight line nose first in the dirt, with their iconic tail fins sticking up in the air. Pioneered by the experimental art and architecture collaborative Ant Farm, the installation was reluctantly funded by the generationally wealthy, eccentric, and later tainted Stanley Marsh III, whose family roots in the Panhandle go back to the 1800s. But the ranch we see today has evolved significantly since it was envisioned in 1974. In fact, it's not even in the same place. Let's look at Cadillac Ranch the forces that created it, and the dramatic ways it's evolved over the last 48 years. Before we start, like and subscribe to help me grow the channel into something great. Now, let's get to the story. To understand why Cadillac Ranch exists, we first have to understand Ant Farm. Ant Farm was a collaborative of artists and architects formed in the 1960s whose ephemeral countercultural concepts were drawing the admiration of the experimental art world. There was no shortage of grand ideas among the group, but most never went beyond the drawing board. Like the ideas that predated it, Cadillac Ranch started as a sketch concept looking for someone to pay for it. They found their patron in Stanley Marsh III, an Amarillo businessman and artist whose grandfather had been a big-time oilman in the Texas Panhandle. Marsh not only had the funds, but was already well involved in advancing Amarillo's art scene. He also happened to own a significant amount of land surrounding the city. Despite being initially skeptical about the concept of the ranch, Marsh agreed to fund the project and commissioned the group to start work. The location for the ranch was set on land Marsh owned a few miles outside of the city on a flat, open field typical of the Panhandle. It was located on the I-40 frontage road, but there was another road here that probably has even more significance for Cadillac Ranch. As it does for much of its route, I-40 through the Texas Panhandle imperfectly follows the Mother Road, Route 66. When the installation was built in 1974, the final touches of I-40 through the Panhandle were being laid, officially bypassing Route 66 and closing the book on one of the most iconic eras in American transportation. Much like Route 66, the oversized pastel-colored Cadillacs were pieces left over from another era. The car's model spanned 14 years, tracing the evolution of the tail fin, a trend popularized by Cadillac and made a phenomena. When the cars were installed, they were solid factory colors, and although none were new or pristine, they were mostly intact. It didn't take long, however, for them to succumb to vandalism and graffiti, an action interestingly enough encouraged by the original artist, who viewed it as a living, breathing piece. Anything that could be broken or ripped off the cars quickly disappeared. Nonetheless, the constantly evolving Cadillac Ranch attracted thousands of passersby traveling I-40 and was a prominent piece of eccentricism in an otherwise reserved stretch of the country, truly obtaining landmark status. But not all was well on the ranch forever. Eventually, Ant Farm's vision of Cadillac Ranch was being threatened. When it was built in 74, the land it was on was rural and well out of view of the city of Amarillo. By the mid-90s, the city's suburbs were encroaching on the site, and the ranch was in grave danger of becoming the Cadillac Mall. In 1997, the entire installation was dug up and moved two miles west along I-40, with the action intentionally kept quiet and reinstalled on a larger, more open stretch of land. As Amarillo continues to grow southwest, it remains to be seen if it will ever have to move again. Despite its notoriety, there have never been any billboards or road signs officially advertising Cadillac Ranch, and I think that's for the best. Although the secret is long out, the mystique and intrigue surrounding it is part of the appeal. Today, the Cadillacs are mere shells of the cars originally buried nearly 50 years ago. Anything that was breakable or removable is long gone, and although the cars will still occasionally get thematically painted for various causes, they're mostly just covered in graffiti, with each visitor leaving a small mark soon to be covered by another. And maybe that's what Cadillac Ranch was always supposed to be. Grand ephemeral art for a grand ephemeral world. In recent years, the ranch organization has taken a significantly more active role in the site. They themselves opened an official trailer-based store selling spray paint, souvenirs, and snacks, 
and food trucks often park alongside it. As part of their increased involvement, they cleaned up the litter that previously dominated the site and constructed improved entrances and gravel walking paths. And its success continues. Roughly 2 million people visit the ranch each year, making it by far the most popular attraction in the Panhandle. I'm thrilled to see the continuing success of Cadillac Ranch. What originated as a sketch by eccentric artists in San Francisco became a world-acclaimed Texas icon, attracting millions of people. If you ever find yourself in Amarillo, go see it. It's a constantly changing art form that attracts people from all over the world, and even if it's going to get covered up, you can leave your mark here on an American icon. Thanks for coming with me to Cadillac Ranch. Subscribe to the channel and join me on the next adventure. <laughs>